Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Tell the friends that, that are just tuning in where you're from. Man, I'm from Akron, Ohio. And I'm not for no foo foo shit. So, so that I'll be trying to tell y'all about how this shit be going when niggas be talking. Like, niggas from Ohio don't be playing. You can't just be talking to him any kind of way. Like speaking of, I was at the Broner press conference. You, I'm sure you've seen it, or at least highlights yeah. Broner Vargas, and the man. He from Ohio. He from a different part, Cincinnati. And he was going off like he was like he was listening to music at first, but then when when it got time to take the headphones off, he called Mayweather promotion CEO a bitch ass nigga. He called Jesse Vargas that. He was just going off on like on the game. He said, "Y'all want me to lose? Why? Why do you think he feel? Why do you think Broner feels that way? Like, I, obviously you can't speak for him, but do do you feel that fans or critics want him to lose? Yeah, I've been I've been saying that for the longest. I've been saying it. So I, I like I just wanted to because people say, man, that nigga always losing. So what I did, man, I went on his I went on his box rack. Mm -hmm. A B, I went on your box rack. His first loss, he hadn't lost one fight, was against Maidana. He came from 135 to, to 47. He lost against Maidana. He won three fights in a row. Came back, fought Sean Porter, lost. Won three fights in a row and lost against Mikey Garcia. And in, that, in, in, in those losses, he fought Khabib Alec Verdeev. Stopped him in a 12th. Made it look so easy. Jesse Vargas, not too long ago, just fought Khabib Alec Verdeev and went tooth and nail with him. Mm. And got a controversial decision. Dude, listen, dude can fight a little bit, but he only got a 33% knockout ratio. And they talking who? about... Who does? Jesse Vargas. Okay. You said they talking about because he stopped Saddam Mali. Did Miguel Cotto stop Saddam Ali? No. Well, that lets me know it was the weight, because he fought him at 54. He fought his whole career at 47. He just caught a right Jesse Vargas. Jesse Vargas probably not. I'm, I give it. I give him a 30% chance to beat Adrian Broner. He not like Mikey Garcia. Broner really be losing to pressure fighters who got power. I'm just going off his past. Madonna, the hardest hitter at 47. Pressure fighter. Rugged. Sean Porter. N nothing even to be discussed. Another Ohio one. Another Ohio one. Mikey Garcia comes to you with pressure. Strategic pressure. And he's a hard puncher. Hmm. I was wrong on a prediction. I gave the man his peas. I mean, how why is that? Why is that? Okay, I was in Vegas. I don't think, hold on, I don't think he can fuck with me, but he good. Why well, I was in Vegas, and then you, you, I think it was Mayweather McGregor. I don't know. We were both in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I stopped Mikey Garcia to and his you, face. Yeah, and thought, and I thought Broner was gonna beat your ass. I got video. I got the video, and you say, "Hey, you I did said, your but thing." But you won. I give you your peas. You did your thing. Why is that so hard for boxing fans to like just admit when someone's lost? Because these niggas don't know shit about boxing. Or when their thing. prediction was wrong, I guess. Because these niggas, man, niggas be predicting shit all the time and be wrong. Niggas can't even predict when it's raining outside. Which fuck is niggas talking about? It fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you said they they can't predict when it's raining. <laughs> when it's raining and snowing and shit, niggas don't even know. Hey, you said going, they niggas don't even know how to do their own predictions with their life. You said <laughs> you said they ain't meteorologists. They don't know what yeah, it's for. Yeah, like nigga, I thought a nigga was gonna beat a nigga. He lost. Okay, but see the shit I be saying come back around. Cause remember I said Walters was gonna beat Lomachenko. But then when I really realized he had the long layoff, I said, I didn't think he was laid off for a year. I thought it was like six months. And then, lo and behold, niggas is getting niggas off layoffs. 
Mayweather turned around and say the same thing in a press conference. Yeah, you let me and listen to And I say to Triple G ain't trying to fight nobody. Niggas dogged me. No, first I said Chocolatito ain't shit. He gonna get stopped. What happened? He gets stopped. I told y'all he wasn't shit. He wasn't ever supposed to be pound for pound. Niggas dogged me. Got his got his ass in there and got stopped. Weren't people yeah. saying? Weren't there people comparing his re- resume to like Floyd? Because they both almost have forty nine, fifty. You know, they were both getting close to that. That forty nine and zero mark or fifty. It's four twenty blood. Ooh. You see my eyes. I'm not up for when I'm been, when I smoke. I'm go. Uh, it's really no filter. Niggas think it wasn't no filter before. Man, that nigga is. He a good little fighter, but he fucking ain't got no defense. And Ooh. when you don't have no defense, Chocolatito, that's a recipe for disaster. He got his ass fucked up, like I said he was. Oh, that's that's all the ingredients for disaster? Disaster. That's that flavor? See, when when that... Broner get in there with these niggas, he don't be looking all beat up like that. Like, that's what I'm saying. His skill level is different. Sean Porter get in there with you. He whoop you, how you looking crazy. But then when Sean Porter get in there with Broner, yeah, it was an awkward fight, but if you go back and really watch it, don't watch it live, go back and really watch it. Broner, the sixth round on, it was a, it was a hard fight. And he dropped him in a 12. So then we going to go talk about when I said, we said talk to Tito. This nigga Triple G, I say he ain't trying to fight nobody. Everybody dogging me. Lo and behold, this nigga get my man Vonis off two-year layoff. And he a 54-pounder. Come on, man. See, they don't understand. I see this shit ahead of time. Because I'm not looking what the man doing right now. Because I understand boxing. He going to whoop them niggas right now. 15, 20 fights. 25 fights. And then when he gets them back and behind him, they still going to be kind of letting him do his little thing. But it that's only for a short period of time. When it comes time where that man really got to get some work, he ain't trying to really work with nobody. You know, I was trying to ask Broner this, but he kind of went off on his own, like, what he had, he called, like, he said, Omar Bitcheroa or something. But yeah. the, the thing I noticed is Broner is, if you, this would, this is fickle about boxing. Broner's coming off a loss to Mikey Garcia, true or false? True. He was down to fight Omar Figueroa, who some people think has some of the ingredients that has given him proper problems, like volume, power, whether he would have won or lost. Clearly facts. Right? And then Omar Figueroa gets hurt, and he's now fighting a, a guy who's been in there with Bradley, Pacquiao, Josecito, and Jesse Vargas, who other people think is another tough fight. And he just don't give a fuck. He don't care. Like, he's willing to take you know, the fade, like, to fight whoever. And then you look at Golovkin, he's fighting Vonis in lieu of Canelo failing a drug test. Why are you making that face? Bro, I literally... But Broner's coming off a loss, bro. I know. He's coming off a loss and still trying to take top-level work in his inner around his division. And it's at 144. Listen, man, I'm going to say this, and niggas not even going to understand what I'm saying. Broner is not like a fighter from this era. He not like these other... These, like some of these new niggas. Hold on, you gotta say that one more time. We gotta do this like battle rap. You gotta, we gotta, we gotta get a pullback on it. Say that. it again. Say it again. He's not a what? He not a fighter from this era. Okay. I thought about it today. Like that nigga be getting fades and lose, and he want more work. Like he want that's more like work. that Sugar Ray Leonard type shit. Yeah, I lost to Roberto. It was good. Let it run my fade again, though. Fuck it. But wow. then he's gonna take the rematch, though. Niggas never take the rematch. Why? They don't want that second run back? What did Madonna, what did Madonna say? Broner hits harder than Floyd. That's right, one man. of the things he said. Sean Porter, Sean Porter, he looking for somebody else. I understand that. Mikey Garcia like, well, no, he got to win a couple. No, he want his fade. Let him get his fade. He was bigger than you, and he gave you a fade. So you got to return the faith. That's how I know he ain't really from here, this era, as far as his, like, mentality of boxing. That's a solid he point. Trying, he trying to fight any and everybody. And speaking of, I see, I, I give Broner credit for what you're talking about right now. If you remember, see, new media, we do the fact checks. You guys can run it back. 
Broner called out Lucas Matisse before Matisse started taking losses to certain people. And people Man, people said that, oh, Broner don't really want that. I don't know no, if he would have beat him. He's been trying to fight dude since dude was at 140 and he was at 135. See, and the thing is, you guys are in the same industry. So if you don't believe him, you got to call his bluff. They never called that bluff. Yeah, if you don't think he really want to fight you, then... Send the contract or whatever. They never did it. He was trying to fight Robert Guerrero, it looked like. They had that little thing in Oakland. Shout out to the town. Bay Area. Yeah, man. Dude ain't really mentally from this era as far as boxing because some of these boxers take a loss and then come back and take a, a, a easy fight. Like. Mm. Or like, even not or, even. No, hold on. I ain't even trying to throw my man under the bus. Not one time because I fuck with Philly. So tough. I fuck with Philly niggas. I f- tough. But my man Danny Garcia came off a tough fight and then took Brandon Rios. Some say that would be an easier fight, you know, because you come off a you coming off a loss. He took some time off and he did what he was supposed to do, which is take an easier fight. And that's the only thing I don't like about Broner, which is like. His strength, like, how do you not like a man's strength? Because he's willing to catch every fade, but at the same time, you got to realize it is a business, and you got to protect yourself. But he don't be getting beat up and shit. When he, he the most punishment he took was against Madonna. So like, he, he just, literally said that to Showtime recently. Did you watch that, or you just? I, I didn't have to watch it because that's crazy. I watched so much boxing. I never even seen what you're talking about. I swear to God. That's that's crazy because he, he literally. I'm gonna send you to you because I was gonna do a video about it. He literally yeah, said, "Dude, don't, dude hasn't took that much punishment. Wow. He only took punishment in the Madonna fight and a little bit in the Emmanuel Taylor fight, but not really. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. His most punishment he took, which probably took, you know, he took rest after that fight though and went back down and did his thing and. Took some easier fights. Like I said, he took three fights and had three wins, then fought Sean Porter. And even in the Sean Porter fight, he didn't take no punishment. Yeah, I was even, I was like impressed. He, didn't fight, he didn't take no punishment. I'm impressed that Sean Porter is very durable and Keith Thurman nor Kell Brook knocked him down. And Broner, although he lost convincingly, oh, he still had this. enough power late to even knock Porter down. That I was I was like, okay. I'm, anything can happen with the universe. Anything, blood. Damn, blood. that man said with the universe. Anything, like Jesse Vargas can get in there and hit hit Broner, and he could it could not be the same. And then Broner, but it's the the ratio of his knockout power doesn't say he's gonna do that. So as a better and, man, you wouldn't go with that. Yeah, so I wouldn't go with him stopping Broner. But I could go with Broner stopping guard, st- stopping Vargas late because if you don't have no power to get Broner's respect, like just being tall ain't going to be enough. Because remember, John John Molina is 5'10 and got more power than Garcia. I mean, and Vargas. Vargas. And that 420? To- That's that 420 you saying Garcia and Yeah, Vargas. like Garcia, Vargas, whatever. They, they, um, he didn't want to even get in there, like, and mix it up with Broner. Yeah, I don't know why he, he was like trying to outbox him. Yeah, no, because he know the reputation of the man. Mm. He don't want to get caught with none of them counters, and he hit Broner with a hard right hand. Fight. Okay, playing devil's advocate. What about the people that say Broner simply does not let his hands go? What is your response? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What does he need to do there? It's about punches landing, not punches thrown. So, I don't know. It's up to him. What I think, uh, the style of fight I think he should fight, though, to kind of, like, answer your question, but, you know, kind of off to the side with it, I think he should, um, Vargas is the, let, okay, for example, I'm going off past fights. That's how I make my shit. Alec Verdeev is a pressure fighter. He pressed Vargas the whole time. Kinda. You know what I'm saying? And that's what gives Vargas problems. Because he don't have power to keep you off of him and get respect. I think Broner should press him behind the high guard. Actually, see, that's why I like talking boxing with people that know boxing. Because Tim Bradley fought a very aggressive fight with Vargas. 
Yeah, because he, and he was like almost to the point where it was like wild. He was kind of wild, but it was effective. And then in the 12th round, he switched it and tried to go to a boxing. And then that's when he got countered and clipped by Vargas. But when he was pressing Vargas, that was when he had the most success for the first 11 rounds. It was just when he started trying to box at the 12th round, all of a sudden, Bradley switched his game plan and got clipped up. See, we talk real boxing over here. Yeah, but then, like I said, um, Vargas be clipping niggas sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't no stopping you. Like, if he clipped you, you could survive. He was telling, asked Tim Bradley for a rematch. Bro, you didn't beat Bradley. Like, and you might get beat brutally tomorrow because dude look like he ain't about to be playing with you. And even if Broner lose, it's going to be a tough fight, bro. Win or lose. I think he's going to stop him late. But you never know. But... Bro, it's going to be tough. Somebody, like, it's going to be tougher for Jesse. 